East Asian capital city of the Philippine Islands, Manila, I bid you all good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the annual Ghost to Ghost program. No guests, just you all. It's your opportunity to tell what you consider to be a very, very scary, very real ghost story. All right, let us begin. Uh, Let's go to the wild card line and say hello, Jack, in Miami, Florida. You are on the air. I was at a Halloween party last year at a frat house on a college campus. Uh, It was very Wicca and uh, occult-oriented, the party. Uh-huh. Uh, I I was only there because of a girl. I wasn't interested in any of that at the time. Uh, something that happened there did pique my interest in it. Um, basically, I was just downstairs, and someone came to the top of the stairs and asked if there was a Jack uh, here. And I was like, that's my name. Right. The guy said, would you come upstairs real quick because the board keeps asking for me or asking for you. The board? I yeah, they said the board, and I didn't even know what they meant by it, but I wasn't really having any fun at all. I oh, really we're didn't. talking Ouija here. We're talking Ouija board. <laughs> uh, you know, so I just, I went upstairs, and when I got upstairs, I walked in the room, and the people, the three people around it uh, were reading it, and they just said, it said, I'm okay. And I asked them, I'm like, well, what's okay? Was it talking to me? But, you know, I was just asking questions. I was like, what is that thing? What's okay? They said they didn't know. And the one guy who did seem to know what was going on uh, concerning all that said that the spirit that was talking then uh, was different than the one that was asking for me. But that before, it was very insistent to them that it spoke to Jack and no one knew who I was because I wasn't in that group. I was just there because of a girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then... The next day, and this is why it's kind of hard for me to tell a story, but the next day I got a call from my mom, and it turned out that my dad passed away the night before at around the oh. same time that I was at the party. Oh. Uh, Jack, there is something to this, and um, I'm going to tell you, buddy, there is a kind of a window. Uh, some ghosts perhaps can continue to haunt for years or be around for years, but there is after somebody passes a short window of hours, days, uh, maybe as long as three weeks, according to some religions, when spirits can very easily make contact, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's what I And think. so that that was your dad. Yeah, it got me into the show when I started researching it, so that's a good thing, too. <laughs> did it, um, I'm curious, did it comfort you, Jack? Um, well, it confused me, really. Uh, I had I had to really wonder... You know, if that was him doing a little more research, I, I, I think it was him. It, it did. Uh, now, now that I know that he just, you know, he did want me to know that he was okay, even though at the time I had no idea what or who it was. Oh, boy, I, you know, in, in retrospect, uh, what an opportunity to ask about the nature of the other side. Uh, if only, you know, the same spirit had been there. But maybe that's something we are just not to know, Jack, until we get there ourselves. Possibly. Take care, buddy, and thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Ouija boards. <laughs> A number of years ago, uh, somebody, and I will, I'm not going to finish this story, so don't, uh, uh, don't uh, hound me to do it. But somebody sent me uh, what had to be an, truly an ancient Ouija board. Really ancient. I mean, this thing looked like, you know, like it had been around since the 1800s or something. There was no explanation with it. There was no no little letter with it or, hey, Art, I thought you'd like to see this. A number of you may recall, um, I think we had a a quick interrupt there. A number of you may recall that I had this Ouija board and uh, something truly awful occurred. And I mean something truly awful occurred. Something so awful that I will not talk about it here on the air. Suffice to say that the Ouija board was dealt with by Ramona and myself in a manner that she understood much better than I did. But my God, that scared me. I mean, it really scared me, folks. 
and I don't I don't scare that easily. But that that incident, what what happened with that doggone Ouija board? Uh, it was really frightening. West of the Rockies, uh, you're on the air. Ghost to Ghost AM 2006. Ah, thank you, Art. Okay, uh, the screener liked to call mine a, a toy from the other side. A toy? A toy from the other side. That's what he said. A toy okay. from the other side. I'll call it that. But what happened was I've been around spirits, ghosts, all my life since I was two. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. One that always came around that I could never see or never saw would always, I'd go to, I'd go to sleep, and a strong burning smell would fill the room. And it wasn't, it was the type like out in a forest burning trees or burning wood. And it would wake me up, and of course I'd flash to some place and, and see if everything was safe. Uh, and then one night, one night, because uh, one night it happened, and it all happened so fast that apparently my spirit was out of my body while I was asleep and doing what they're doing. But I woke up so fast, and so I thought fire, and I flashed my from my bed, and I didn't kill myself or anything, and I crashed right into him. Oh my God. Right into him. He was on the corner of my bed, on the corner of my bed, and I flashed, and we, we collided into each other. And because I had just woken up and in a, a real tranquil state, I could tell his features, his eyes, and a mouth. You could just see, because it is energy, just open wide. And I scared the heck out of him, and I scared, of, and of course, I was just really, I don't know what, but in the moments that quickly happened, he came back up, and I was still trying to come back or get awake or whatever, and he, and I knew mental telepathy-wise, he showed me a toy. He had a toy. He was saying to me, this is my toy. Because we had this meeting, and and I looked at it, and I'm an artist, and I can describe what I saw. I can describe what I saw, and afterwards you can ask me what I saw, this toy from the other side. But I was so irritated, I had to get to this fire. So I just said, get out of my way. And I ran to the kitchen, but I realized my spirit wasn't in my body, and I couldn't catch up with myself. I... I I went forward, and I fell into the kitchen. Diane? Yeah. Hold the story right there. We've got to take a break here at the bottom of the hour. This is Ghost to Ghost AM. Ghost to Ghost AM, indeed. A special liner from uh, Ross Mitchell, the voice from Down Under. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it may be, wherever you are across most of the Americas. It's, of course, Halloween. In fact, of course, across all of the Americas. I suppose not the eastern time zones. It may have clicked over. But what we're doing all night long is nothing but stories from all of you. Nothing but the very best. If you have a very excellent ghost story, I mean, grab you by the the short the shorts and just tug, you know, that kind of ghost story then we want to hear from you. Those are the numbers. Now, there is going to be one additional way that you can get your story on the air because we realize the uh, phone lines are jammed. So if you have something totally beyond excellent, a Tom Danheiser, uh, the screener for this night, and a very tough screener he is, uh, would be happy to peruse the Fast Blasts and what you can do is, uh, is go to Fast Blast and uh, just put a little tiny nugget and say, Tom, this one is really, really good, and then supply your telephone number. And if Tom has time, he will indeed call you. So, in other words, calling in is not your only possible avenue to getting in. Since we're so jammed on the lines, uh, we'll add Fast Blast. Just put a little tiny nugget of information 
trying to tempt Tom into calling you about, you know, something about how good your ghost story is, and then put your area code and phone number there. And uh, if you're lucky, if Tom is tempted, he will call you. Uh, your phone will ring, and before you know it, you will be on the air. This is Ghost to Ghost AM. <laughs> Philippines are absolutely cell phone crazy. I mean, they are cell phone crazy. Uh, we've got a young lady telling us about a toy. Well, I got a, I just got a new toy. It's a P990i, a Sony, new Sony uh, cell phone. It's really cool. It, it allows you to do video calls back and forth. Oh, my God, it's cool. Also, Wi-Fi connections to the Internet. You can send email. It's kind of a, it's a smartphone combo, PDA phone, and it just is everything you can possibly imagine. And then more. I'm still learning about it days later. So that's my t- a new toy. Back now to Diane's toy. Diane? Okay, so I plead from him after I don't get out of my way. And and I was going towards the kitchen, and it was it was if I was trying to get there with no legs, and I could feel behind me something trying to get in me, trying, you know, trying to get, get in me, and I uh, fell to my knees in my kitchen, and then I felt entered, and I entered, and I just felt. It was my spirit, and, and all this had happened with my spirit out of my body and the conscious, and now I realize some things about this whole thing, um, what happens when we are asleep. So I was able to pick myself up off the floor and go back into the room, and, of course, the smell and everything, as usual, is, is totally gone. But the toy, okay, I told you I'm, I'm an artist, so... What the toy looked like, uh, he held it from behind. I could tell he was he was maneuvering it from behind for me and holding it up in front of me. I can best just say in Star Wars, the very first Star Wars, not the little robot, but the companion of the little robot. Uh, yes. E2, or what was his name? Well, there was R2-D2. That was a little one. And then uh, 3CPO, I believe. Yeah, it was the taller one. That's okay, right. this is what it looked like, but I don't know what it's called when scientists work with their calculus and you see all these lines uh, crossed and all that stuff. Well, he was entirely the toy, what looked like that figure, but was of all these lines, uh, dimensions and everything crossed. That's weird. I, I, have, I have two questions for you. Um, you said that uh, you woke up in a start and really quickly. You know, maybe these entities, uh, Diane, depend on the fact that you're sort of in sleep and sort of coming out slowly of sleep, and so they can normally quickly, easily get away before you're awake enough to know what was even there. Absolutely. That's comment one. Comment two, you said some good, some bad. Now, when you say good and bad, do you mean angelic versus evil? Yes, because I have my picture of one that was taken that was over me, and she's beautiful. She's just a beautiful, beautiful. It's in color. Of, uh, she's leaning right down over my Oh, well, there you have it. Then some, some, thank you very much, Diane. Some, as you might imagine, as in life, as in death, there is, uh, there's always an opposite. I guess you cannot, you cannot define good. You cannot know good unless there is bad, unless there is evil, right? It has to be there, perhaps even on the other side. Certainly the stories would seem to to verify that. Again, if you have a really good ghost story, don't be afraid to put a little tempting sentence about it uh, on Fast Blast along with your area code and phone number, and who knows, Mean Tom may call you. Wildcard Line, you are on Ghost to Ghost AM. Hi, Art. This is Rose of Durango. Hello, Rose. About 20 years ago, 
when I was in college, I rented a room in an old 100-year-old house. It's called the Gable House. Now, this house was an old, dusty brick color, a uh, dark red, uh, dusty color, with a black roof. And it was called the Gable House because it had these turrets and uh, large gables and balconies, that sort of a thing. It was built in the late 1800s by a rich man. It later turned into the first hospital Durango ever had. I so, lived in a home just like it, huh? Have you? Yeah, yeah, in Maryland, right on the Maryland-Pennsylvania border, a very, very old house with 32 rooms. <laughs> wow. And it was, uh, it was a house that uh, had secret passages in it. It was used, uh, you know, as part of the, um, of the slaves, you know, to get slaves from the south to the north. Oh, it that was would be per- fascinating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, this house uh, had fallen into disrepair, and then in the 70s, a couple had bought it and refurbished it. They did the whole bottom part for themselves, but they kept the old operating table. And it came down from the ceiling on pulleys. And it was their living room conversation piece. (laughs) Well, (laughs) of course you move in, and all of the other college students are more than willing to tell you what your room was used for. Yes, I'm sure. I was up on the third floor in the very back room. And they said, oh, I wouldn't want to be in that room. And I said, why? Why? Because that's where they kept the mental patients. It was farthest from the front door. Mm. So I had, uh, I've lived on Indian reservations a lot, and I had friends, and I asked them what to do. And they said, to protect the room, you do this, and they gave me a feather and everything. But they forgot to tell me to cleanse the room. Uh huh. So one night, I was laying in bed, and I woke up in the middle of the night. And over to the right of me were these three, you could call them shadow people, but I could tell that they were trapped within a small circle, and they couldn't get out, and I knew they couldn't harm me, but they just bothered me. Well, I I should say, yeah. Yeah. One was a short, fat sort of woman. Another was a medium-sized, thin woman. And the third was a dark, thin man. And Did they, they have substance, or were they sort of translucent? No, they were uh, solid black. But I didn't get the impression that they were souls. I got the impression that they had been created as entities by the despair and sorrow that went on in the hospital. Have you ever heard of uh, people creating an entity? Um, yes, of course. The uh, the monster from the id. Um Yes, of course. Yes. And they didn't really seem to know I was there, but they were just so depressing. And uh, so this all happened rather quickly. Next, I noticed that up at ceiling level to my left were three white entities. These three were men. One kind of reminded me of uh, an old Greek scholar. Uh, uh, Aristotle, Sophocles, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Sort of a Sean Connery for people who don't have the picture in their mind. <laughs> and he was, he, was in, he was the one who was in charge. He was sort of the mentor of these other two. The other one seemed to be a short, fat, medieval merchant type. Huh. And the other one was just uh, a non-time descript. He was just a young man, young athletic man. And the older fellow was sitting there. They were, they were, here I was with these entities, and they're saying, well, now, in these situations, the uh, protocol is to do blah, blah, blah. Uh, they were discussing it this way. And then suddenly, the young athletic spirit, and they were just, they were just white light, but I got the impression of what they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they did have arms and legs, white light with arms, legs, head. It dropped down on my left side, put its arm around me, and, you know, white light may be good, but I still don't want anything laying down next to me and putting its arm around me. No. So I I said, what are you doing? And the young man said, I'm here to protect you. I fell asleep instantly, 
and slept till morning. Well, maybe perhaps again the yin and the yang, the, the good versus the evil. Yes, maybe they had, were protecting you from the darker entities. Yes, that I had not cleared out. So people should clear before they protect. All right. All right. Thank you very, very much for the story, Rose. Thank you. And uh, you take care, yes. The good and the bad. The good and the evil. They do seem to come together, don't they? I guess they're here, and they're, well, on the other side as well. Let's go all the way to uh, Nebraska and say, James, you're on the air, Ghost to Ghost AM. Uh, how are you, Art? I'm very well, uh, sir. Uh, yeah, the story I was telling Tom was about when I was uh, probably about uh, probably about nine or ten years old. I lived in a house that was an old, I would say, it. From what I was told when I was younger, it was an army recovery hospital. Uh-huh. And my brothers remember seeing when they were younger, down in the basement, people all bandaged up, uh, you know, reaching out to them as if to say, you know, help me. Yes. And one of the other things is that when I was, when I was also younger, we lived, uh, the house unfortunately is no longer there. I would have loved gone through it nowadays uh, to yeah. see what we, we could get. I always remembered having a feeling of being watched from we were like in the center room and then there was a room off to uh, the right of us, off to the east, that also contained our bathroom. But I always felt like something was looking at me from the darkness. Something probably was. Uh, something probably uh, you know, was. You, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, even when we do the EVPs, you'll notice that uh, the electronic voice phenomena, they go to prisons they go to hospitals. They go to yeah. place, uh, places where there were suicides. They go to graveyards. They go to, but but uh, especially hospitals, mental wards, that sort of place. Any place where it seems like there was a great deal of suffering, something lingers. Exactly. And th- what I was telling Tom was when I one Saturday morning, when me and my younger brother were watching uh, Saturday morning cartoons, of course, I just glanced into the kitchen and the way that our home is was set up at the time is that we were in the living room then the dining room and there was a basically a doorway into the kitchen now right across literally parallel with this doorway was a window to the outside and the sun had just come up and i seen a woman in nurse's garb crossed in front of this window now the only reason i seen her is because she blocked out the light and I went in there, and there was nobody there. Nobody. So whatever it was had substance, or it could not have blocked oh, yeah. the light. I mean, this, this had to have some type of substance. And it just, it, 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 to talk about it now, it just kind of creeps me out. It's like, ooh, sends a shiver up my spine. But I, I truly believe that not only was that house somewhat haunted, but my family, every house that I've lived in has some type of activity in it. Including the do you, one I'm do you think it's now. do you think it's you that's bringing the activity? You know, to be honest, every house that I have lived in has some type of activity. Even when I'm not there, I just everybody said that there's some strange things that go on there. Uh, one Halloween, actually, this is kind of a funny story. Um, my brother's uh, mother-in-law was staying with us, and she had a little uh, trinket on, or not a trinket, but a little squeeze toy on her keychain and this thing when you squeeze it it said i love i love chocolate those little chocolate mousse one halloween night that thing went off by itself i had no clue what it would do i was like whoa you know it was like right across the room from me i go over and i squeeze it and it said you know it says it's lying i turn around art and i walk back to the chair and just as i sat down that thing went off again and i uh, you know i'm a big guy but that made me scream. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> All right, James. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was I was almost ready to imagine that it was going to say something other than I like chocolate. Perhaps something like, get the hell out. <laughs> I don't know. The one thing you can't deny as you listen to all of these stories, and they will line up throughout the night, is that th- these, they're real. These things are real. It's one of the great, this and EVP 
are the things that uh, give me almost, I would say, an absolute faith that there is uh, an existence of some sort uh, after death. Now, some of what you're hearing is not exactly comforting regarding the nature of life after death, but, um, well, there's an interesting question for a lot of you. Uh, Given what you've heard tonight and what you will be hearing through the night and what you've heard with EVP, if that indeed is the existence you can expect after you die, would you prefer the great nothingness or would you prefer, well, what you've heard? East of the Rockies in Colorado somewhere, John. Hi, Art. It's an honor yes. and pleasure to speak with you, sir. And with you. I just can't believe I even got through tonight. It's amazing. Um, and my birthday's in two days, so this must be an early birthday present. Happy it's All birthday. Saints Day. I'm, or actually, tomorrow's All Saints Day, and then All Souls Day is the day after, mm-hmm. if you're aware of that. Um, but well, I want to tell you a ghost story, of course. One appropriate thing to do. Please. Um, When I was about 12 years old, I went up to uh, Mackinac Island, which is a part of Michigan. Oh, I know it well. Mm -hmm. I I had a great aunt and uncle that had a place up there. They had a place there and in Florida. And, you know, they offered us, you know, it's a nice place to stay. Would you like to come up and stay there? And and my family, it was my sister, my mother, my dad. We all said, sure, we'd like to come up. And uh, so we went up there one summer. Um, not knowing anything about the house or anything, of course, but we went up there, and as soon as I walked in the house, I felt something weird, but, you know, you're thinking, well, no one's going to believe me, or they'll think I'm crazy if I say there's something in this house, but I've always kind of had a sense of that, you know, and uh, I've lived in old houses most of my life, so I've been around that stuff. Um... One thing that would happen would when you be walking up the stairway, you'd find yourself, it's kind of like if you're in a crowd. You, you step around people because you can feel they're there, but you don't always see them. Yes. But you know, you have the sense that someone's standing there. Um, you would find yourself stepping around people. Um, and then kind of look and say, well, well, how come I can't see anybody? You know, it's the sense you had, I can feel someone there, but they're not, I don't see anyone there. Um, but, you know. Um, that happened, and then I was watching TV in the another room, and I felt someone sit down on the couch right next to me, to the point where I looked over to see, you know... Who it was. Well, to see if the cushion in the couch went down. If someone sat next to you, you'd feel that, right? Of or you'd course. see that. Yeah. Um, the cushion didn't go down, but I can tell you, someone sat down next to me watching TV. And so... <laughs> You know, and, and plus, you never felt alone in the house. Someone earlier said they felt there, there were eyes glaring at them. That's exactly how it was. You never were alone in that house. Um, you'd be in the bathroom, and there was eyes glaring at you. It's a part of a sense uh, mm-hmm. that we have. I think uh, animals, of course, have it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think that, uh, that we have it as well. It's um, a very old ability. Many of us uh, in the modern world have kind of blocked it out, but there, it, you know, it's it's a, a danger sense. You understand if somebody is near you, if somebody's stalking you, if somebody's got a rifle aimed at you, you know if somebody's in the room with you. This is Ghost to Ghost AM. 